Generating medical waste starts with having patients who need to be treated using different kinds of medical kits by various manufacturers. We have syringes, we have IV fluids, we have uh, cotton wools also there, we have cannulas. Other medical waste includes used beds, mattresses and other operating machines. Um, the manufacturer directs us on how to ban them. With the disease burden in different countries, medical waste is not difficult to generate. Mulago Hospital, where we get to see the process of medical waste disposal, up to 1,200 patients are treated here daily. Each patient we put on a pair of examination gloves and we do the procedures. So every after a procedure, we dispose of whatever we've used on the patient. And the waste begins accumulating. After removing the gloves, we also protect ourselves with alcohol, which is 70%, so that we don't transmit any infection. According to the World Health Organization, of the total amount of waste generated by healthcare workers, about 80% is general waste. The 20% is considered hazardous and may be infectious, toxic or radioactive. To distinguish this, there are different containers at the hospital indicating what goes where. We have red for highly infectious waste. Here we put body parts or blood. When the goes is filled with blood, then we have infectious waste. Anything which comes in contact with a patient and is soiled with body fluids or excreta or blood, we put it in a yellow bin. We put in bin liners to protect the people who take the waste to the incinerator. In the black goes mostly what is termed as domestic waste, separated into dry and wet, including plastics and leftover food. We usually um, health educate the patients on arrival. We tell them what to put in each bin. Freda Kampurira, one of the cleaners, thinks otherwise. Most patients mix domestic and medical waste in the bins, and this makes sorting it very difficult and dangerous. Asked whether the waste handlers are well protected, Kasim, their supervisor, says by about 100%. Their uniforms are soaked in cheek after work, and they have gloves to protect them from infectious items like blood in gauzes and injections. A Akampulera disproves this. Some medical workers are negligent. They dispose needles and other medical waste poorly. We do have gloves, but a glove cannot prevent you from being pricked by a needle. Akampura now believes that the hospital would benefit from more health workers. Sometimes the number of patients overwhelms the doctors, and some of the patient's caretakers take it upon themselves to get rid of IVs and bandages, which mixes the waste. Each year, about 16 million injections are used worldwide, but the WHO says that not all syringes and needles are well disposed of after use. Sharp instruments including needles, syringes, disposable scalpels and blades, amongst others, represent 1% of total waste, but they are the main source of disease transmission. The infection here may be bacterial infection. We are concerned are things like HIV, AIDS, and hepatitis. Both are global menaces which need not be fueled by careless disposal. In 2000, WHO estimates that injections with contaminated syringes caused 21 million hepatitis B virus infections, 2 million hepatitis C virus infections, and 260,000 HIV infections worldwide. It's very painful to acquire a disease when you do not have that disease. Joy Rinbarium Maiso, a nursing officer as well as a trainer in infection control, just like Doreen, says that they labor to train all medical staff at the hospital, as well as other staff members, at least twice a week. The way we handle our waste and the way she, however, says that sometimes training is rendered useless by inadequate equipment. It remains theoretical. Even if we train and you go back, you said, why have you mixed them? He said, 
There's only one bean. What do you want me to do? They need more beans, they may need all the liners, disinfectants. Because even, you saw those boys when they were cleaning. They just used this water. Did you see any disinfectant today? After separating all the medical waste from the domestic waste, it is brought here to the incinerator which serves Mlago Hospital. It is burnt right down to the ashes. However, there is still pollution and there is need for a better machine to dispose off of this waste. The incinerator is recommended even by the WHO. However, fumes from it often irritate nostrils. They are part of pollution that can easily give rise to disease, especially respiratory tract infections. WHO advises that materials containing metal such as mercury or chlorine, including some blood bags and IV bags, should not be incinerated. Incineration should be done above 800 degrees centigrade and not be overloaded. Now this non-pollutant machine at the Naguru China Friendship Hospital, which the Minister of Health wants to adopt, eliminates all this. I think we have it now for the last four weeks. Uh, it is the second in Africa, purely for demonstration. And if it performs well, then other hospitals are going to acquire this kind of equipment. Unlike the incinerator, it is a movable machine, mainly designed for on-site treatment of infectious biomedical waste. The medical waste in this combustor is not different from that in the incinerator. Syringe of blood, cotton, and so on, the level of infectiousity is higher. And the objective of the treatment is to reduce the level of infectiousity to zero. The waste goes into these buckets, ready for disposal. This waste is more safe than the domestic waste. So at this level, you have two ways. You can throw it away with the domestic waste, or you can lead it in the center for recycling. I can touch it with my hand, because I'm sure it's harmless. Harmless is what it should be. However, there are fears generated from the public who receive treatment from home. We just put it together with the rest of the garbage. You know, children play with everything at home. So if they come across the waste before maybe the garbage collection company has taken it, it can be dangerous to them. So the onus is on whoever is collecting the garbage, maybe taking it to wherever they throw it to separate medical waste from the rest of the garbage. So I think we should educate people to try to avoid using needles and syringes in their homes. But of course, we have the diabetics. We have diabetics. Those need to be educated as how to dispose them. Smaller health facilities like clinics are also suspected of mixing waste. Meanwhile, research into new waste management technologies or alternatives to incineration is still ongoing, and countries are encouraged to adapt them when they are available. In the long run, it saves them from spending on preventable infections. Florence Nalimba. NTV.